we have to look at a lot to find a good deal. It's 11031. This is one of the hundred. They may call back and say, actually, we don't know why it hasn't sold. You know, it's on the market at a million. It's generating 100,000 in rent. I'm making the numbers up. 10% return. It's, it's a good return in this market. Um, no, it's a corner site, which is good. It seems a bit of a rundown area, but for industrial, that doesn't matter. It's an older building. You can see by, there's a bit of work need doing on that roof up there. It's got separate um, window AC units. That's never as good as a big, you know, central AC plant. It looks as though it's tenanted right now. You know, the first sort of thing I'd want to ask on a building like this is, what are the current rentals? What are they collecting in rent? And what's the lease terms? Do they have three months left to run or three years or another five years? Because ultimately this will be a numbers game. So when it comes to commercial, there are four questions we have to ask. Number one, what is the current rental they're getting per square foot? And number two, what are market rentals per square foot? Meaning if they're currently getting $15 a foot and market rentals are $12 a foot, most people think, well, that's good. It's more than market, but it's actually not that good because if you lose this tenant, they go bankrupt or they do a runner on you, you're not going to get a new tenant at 15. You're only get, going to get one at 12. On the other hand, if market renters are $12 a foot and they're only getting $9 a foot here, generally that's good. It should be sold on the basis of what's the current income divided by the cap rate. And that way it's being sold at a discount because market rentals are actually $12 a foot. And we know that at the next rent review, or if this tenant doesn't renew, they leave and we get a new tenant in, we should be able to get a new tenant. That's what market rents mean we can bring the rents from $9 a foot to $12 a foot. So that'll increase the value of the building. So they're the first two questions, rental per square foot and market rents per square foot. The next one is, what are we paying to buy it per square foot? Is it 110 foot, you know, dollars a square foot? And then what does it cost to rebuild? What's the replacement cost? Because if the replacement cost is $200 a foot and we can buy it at 110, that's good. We're buying it at a discount. Yeah, it needs a coat of paint and the roof needs fixing, big deal. On the other hand, if, you know, it's being sold at $200 a foot, but replacement costs are a lot lower, then I'd rather build a new building. So we've got to make sure that those four things are in alignment with each other. And if they are, it's a good deal. If we can get 10% return on this and money's costing us seven and a half and it's a triple net lease, it's a pretty good deal as long as there's demand for this sort of space. So we need to know a lot more. We don't know the area yet. We don't know the layout. It's got to be functional for someone. I see garage doors at the end, but I don't know if it's container height. I don't know if they can bring a container in there. So that's the sort of thing that, you know, we'd want to speak with the agent and find out what's the deal, what's the performer on it, what's the executive summary on it, and hopefully they've got the listing of all of that. If they don't, it doesn't matter. I'm never concerned about that. I never get mad at them because it means my competition's kept at bay. It means other people can't get that information either. And I can go around and get a pretty good of the square footage either by eyeballing it or pacing it. I can see what the stud height is usually from somewhere on the outside. And we might even knock on the door and see who's here and say, hey, we understand the building's on the market. Do you have a flyer with some information on it? Chances are they won't. But instead of saying, no, go and talk to the agent, they might say, no, but we can give you the rough numbers. So again, I've got no inhibitions. Talk with someone. I've never been bopped on the head with an umbrella or worse because I asked a question about a building that was for sale. So it's a matter of we need information right now. We don't know enough to make even an informed decision about whether we should look more at it. So I think we should try and see if we can find out. I'm going to look through the side here, get an idea for what there might be there in terms of stud height and doorway heights and all that sort of thing. And then knock on the door to see if anyone's here. Yeah, there's someone there. See, those, that's not quite big enough for container height. Arena, could you call the office and say, hey, I've got clients that have mentioned this building here, what, 80, 1875 West, whatever. Uh -huh. um, do we have any details on it? The current lease amount is the dollars that they're paying rent, how many square feet and how many years left on the lease. There's a lot more information we need before we pull the trigger, but that's sort of three of the main things. Oh, see, so we've got $209 per square foot, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 14,000 square feet, $200 a square foot, okay. But if it's 14,000 at 200, that's 140,000 at 20. That's 1.4 million at two. That's $2.8 million. So we need to know what the rental is now. And, you know, 280,000 obviously would give a 10% return. So it'd be interesting to see what the, the returns are. Like, are they selling it at a 4% cap rate or a 5% cap rate? 
Yeah, I want to know what that means. It said available. Usually that means available for lease. So it could be that only a portion of it is leased by these guys here. They seem to be having, um, you know, shop equipment and photocopier machines and that. Hard to tell though, but maybe they're only leasing a small portion of it. Yeah, usually when you see available, it means that there's space available for, for lease. So I'm not sure if, to what extent it's actually a for sale. It could be space. It could be we're renting it out. It usually means for lease. It hasn't been used in a while. You can see this plate is missing here. So anyone using this garage door, you'd want to be careful your wheels don't drop in there or anything else. Yeah, interesting. You call them. I mean, they've got it either for sale or lease. We're not sure yet. And you call and there's no one there. And then you leave a message. And no wonder they're not selling it. Now, most people say, that's terrible. I say, this is good. Because anyone else who stopped to look at it, they would they have given up. So some of my best deals have come from when the information wasn't freely or easily available. So I'm never put off by that. We have to look at a lot to find a good deal. It's 11031. This is one of the hundred. They may call back and say, actually, we don't know why it hasn't sold. You know, it's on the market at a million. It's generating 100,000 in rent. I'm making the numbers up. 10% return. It's, it's a good return in this market. With no number, how are you going to call on that? And they must know it's not working, but they probably don't care because they get the regular customers. But who knows what they're missing out on? Often the fact that a business isn't doing well is not indicative that no business would do well there. Often it's just that. It's very much a bitsy building. They've added to it. You can see a concrete extension there. A, metal extension yeah they cause an environmental challenge you know when they're operational like they've got to conform but um yeah they, they they work well anything on a commercial lease when you understand the fundamental difference in my view between residential and commercial then you tend to not want to look at residential anymore unless it's a house you're going to live in because commercial is so easy the tenants look at they maintain it you know when a tenant of mine in a house gets angry and punctures a hole in the wall they call me to fix it you know, whether I have to or not, it's, it's a debate not worth getting into. You just fix it. But with commercial, they tend to look after all their own maintenance, except for keeping the building watertight. That generally is the responsibility of the landlord. And they pay all the outgoings, the property taxes, insurance and maintenance. With residential property, the landlord pays those. And they have a vested interest in keeping the place looking good because they earn their income there. Now, these guys, they do scrap metal and everything. They don't need to keep their place looking good. But a dental clinic and an accounting, they want to make it look good so that they attract clients. They'll paint it, they'll repair things, they'll put flowers outside, they'll cut the grass. You've got, you know, all these advantages of commercial. that Once you truly understand them, it's a no-brainer almost. And then hearing that there's one with maybe 10, 12% return, I want to get the details on it. Absolutely. So the building has a bit of a contraption on it. I don't know what it is. I think it's part of an old cooling tower to keep the building cool. They probably don't even use it because it's a scrap metal dealer. The building of itself isn't inherently beautiful as such that I say, I want to own that. Um, but I still want to know the numbers. We didn't get the rental income numbers from it. We got the purchase price because if it offers a very good return, it could be worthwhile having in a portfolio. But I wouldn't go to a lot of effort to pursue this one just because there are a lot of great deals out there, pending, of course, knowing what the rental income is and how long they've got left on the lease. If there's a very short time left on the lease, I'd do some research to see what uptake is of vacant space here. You know, people like scrap metal dealers, uh, those who recycle batteries, outfits like that, they don't need great premises. In fact, they might like the fact that if they spill a bit of acid, no one's going to complain about it. Um, so it's all a matter of, you know, horses for courses. Worth checking into. I wouldn't spend another three days investigating this one, though, without getting those numbers back first.